Biological diversity means the variability among living organisms from all sources including terrestrial, marine and other aquatic ecosystems and the ecological complexes of which they are part. This includes diversity within species, between species and of ecosystems. Biodiversity is classified into three main categories, genetic diversity, species diversity and ecosystem diversity. This is what we tried to explore in the previous module along with briefly studying biological diversity that exists on our planet and our country. In this module, we would try to understand how this biodiversity is distributed on our planet and why some regions have more number of species than the other. We would also analyze the importance of species diversity to the ecosystem. And in the end of this module, we would also try to talk about biodiversity lost and some of the reasons that have led to loss of biodiversity. So let's begin with understanding how biodiversity is distributed on our planet or the patterns of biodiversity. So in this, the first pattern is the latitudinal gradient. The diversity of plants and animals is not uniform throughout the world but shows a rather uneven distribution. For many group of animals of, or plants, there are interesting patterns in diversity, the most well known being the latitudinal gradient in diversity. In general, species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the pole. Tropics, latitudinal range 23.5 degree north to 23.5 degree south, harbors more species than temperate or polar areas. Colombia, located near the equator, has nearly 1400 species of birds, while New York at 41 degree north has 105 species and Greenland at 71 degree north only 56 species. India, with much of its land area in tropical latitude, has more than 1200 species of birds. A forest in a tropical region like Ecuador has up to 10 times as many species of vascular plant as a forest of equal area in a temperate region like the Midwest of the USA. The largely tropical Amazonian rainforest in South America has the greatest biodiversity on Earth. It is home to more than 40,000 species of plants, 3,000 of fishes, 1,300 species of birds, 427 species of mammals, 427 of amphibians, 378 species of reptiles, and more than 1,25,000 invertebrates. Scientists estimate that in these rain forests, there might be at least 2 million insect species waiting to be discovered and named. So what is so special about the tropics that might account for their greater biological diversity? Ecologists and evolutionary biologists have proposed various hypotheses. Some important ones are that number one, speciation, that is the process of formation of new species is generally a function of time. Unlike temperate regions subjected to frequent glaciation in the past, glaciation that means the process or the state of being covered by glaciers or ice sheets. Tropical latitudes have remained relatively undisturbed for millions of years and thus had a long evolutionary time for species diversification. Secondly, tropical environments unlike temperate ones are less seasonal relatively more constant and predictable, such constant environments promote niche specialization and lead to a greater species diversity. And thirdly, that there is more solar energy available in the tropics which contributes to higher productivity, thus in turn might contribute indirectly to greater diversity. Coming on to the second pattern that we see and it is called as species area relationship. During his pioneering and extensive exploration in the wilderness of South American jungles, the great German naturalist and geographer Alexander von Humboldt observed that within a species, richness increased with increasing explored area. But only up to a limit. In fact, the relationship between species, richness and area for a wide variety of taxa, including angiosperm, plants, birds, bats, freshwater, fishes, etc., 
turns out to be a rectangular hyperbola. On a logarithmic scale, the relationship is a straight line described by the equation log s is equal to log c plus z log a, where s stands for species richness, a stands for area, z stands for slope of the line or the regression coefficient, c stands for the y-intercept. Ecologists have discovered that the value of z lies in the range of 0.1 to 0.2, regardless of the taxonomic group or the region whether it is a plant in Britain, birds in California, or mollusks in New York states, the slope of the regression line are amazingly similar. But if you analyze the species area relationship among very large areas, like the entire continents, you will find that the slope of the line to be much steeper. That is, the z values are in the range of 0.6 to 1.2. For example, Fruit-eating birds and mammals in the tropical forest of different continents, the slope is found to be 1.15. Now let's move on the study of importance of species diversity to the ecosystem. Does the number of species in a community really matter to the functioning of the ecosystem? This is a question for which ecologists have not been able to give a definitive answer. For many decades, ecologists believe that communities with more species generally tend to be more stable than those with less species. What exactly is stability for a biological community? A stable community should not show too much variation in productivity from year to year. It must be either resistant or resilient to occasional disturbances, which could be natural or man-made. And it must also be resistant to invasion by alien species. We do not know how the attributes are linked to species richness in a community. But with David Tillman's long-term ecosystem experiment using outdoor plots provides some tentative answers. Tillman found that plots with more species showed less ear-to-ear -ear variations in total biomass. He also showed that in his experiments, increased diversity contributed to higher productivity. Although we may not understand completely how species richness contributes to the well-being of an ecosystem. We know enough to realize that rich biodiversity is not only essential for ecosystem health, but imperative for the very survival of the human race on this planet. At a time when we are losing species at an alarming pace, one might ask, does it really matter to us if a few species become extinct? Would Western Ghats ecosystem be less functional if one of its tree frog species is lost forever? How is our quality of life affected if, say, instead of 20,000, we have only 15,000 species of ants on Earth? There are no direct answers to such naive questions, but we can develop a proper perspective through an analogy. The ribbit popper hypothesis, used by Stanford ecologist Paul Ehrlich. In an airplane, which may be considered as an ecosystem, all parts are joined together using thousands of rivets, which could be a substitute for the term species. If every passenger traveling in it pops out a rivet and take home, causing a species to become extinct, it may not affect flight safety. Proper functioning of ecosystem. Initially, but as more and more rivets are removed, the plane becomes dangerously weak over a period of time. Furthermore, which rivet is removed may also be critical. Loss of rivets on wings is obviously a more serious threat to flight safety than loss of a few rivets on the seats or window inside the plane. Coming on to the main issue of loss of biodiversity. Species have been evolving, changing, dying out since life began. In fact, scientists estimate that over 99% of species that have ever lived are now extinct. So extinction is not new, but humans' activity today is causing the greatest wave of extinction since dinosaurs disappeared. The current rate of species loss is approaching thousand times the typical rate. And as species disappear, the potential contribution to human knowledge that is carried in their genes is also lost. Species diversity is related to genetic diversity. The more genetically diverse a species is, the greater its chance of surviving disturbances. So as human activity reduces genetic diversity, species are put at greater risk of extinction. 
Species diversity, in turn, is linked to ecosystem diversity. Therefore, as ecosystems are damaged, the organisms that inhabit them becomes more vulnerable to extinction. How are humans influencing biodiversity? Humans reduced biodiversity by altering habitats, hunting, etc. Introducing invasive species, releasing pollutants into food webs and contributing to climate change. Biologists compare loss of biodiversity to destroying a library before its books are ever read. While it's doubtful if any new species are being added through speciation into the Earth's treasury of species, there is no doubt about the continuing losses. The biological wealth of our planet has been declining rapidly and the accusing finger is clearly pointing to human activities. The colonization of tropical Pacific islands of, by humans is said to have led to the extinction of more than 2,000 species of native birds. The IOCN Red List of 2004 documents the extinction of 784 species, including 338 vertebrates and 359 invertebrates and 87 plants. In the last 500 years, some examples of recent extinctions include the dodo, quagga, stellar sea cow, and three subspecies, that is Bali, Javan, Caspian species of tiger. The last 20 years alone have witnessed the disappearance of 27 species. Careful analysis of records show that extinction across taxa are not random. Some groups like the amphibians appear to be more vulnerable to extinction. Adding to the grim scenario of extinction is the fact that more than 15,000 species worldwide are facing the threat of extinction. Presently, 12% of all bird species, 23% of all mammalian species, 32% of all amphibian species, and 31% of all gymnosperm species in the world face the threat of extinction. From a study of the history of life on Earth through fossil records, we learn that large-scale loss of species like the one we are currently witnessing have also happened earlier even before humans appeared on the scene. During the long period of Earth's history of about 3 billion years, since the origin and diversification of life on Earth, there were five episodes of mass extinction of species. How is the sixth extinction presently in progress different from the previous episodes? The difference is in the rates. The current species extinction rates are estimated to be 100 to 1,000 times faster than in the pre-human times, and our activities are responsible for the faster rates. Ecologists warn that if the present trends continue, nearly half of all the species on the Earth might be wiped out within the next 100 years. In general, loss of biodiversity in a region may lead to a decline in plant production or lowered resistance to environmental perturbations such as drought and increased variability in certain ecosystem processes such as plant productivity, water use, pest and disease cycles, etc. So now coming on to the causes of biodiversity losses. The accelerated rates of species extinction that the world is facing now are largely due to human activities. There are four major causes which is also called as the evil quadrant. The first one includes the habitat loss and fragmentation. When natural habitats are eliminated, for agricultural or for urban development, the number of species in those habitats drop. And some species may become extinct. But habitats don't need to be completely destroyed to put species at risk. Development often splits ecosystem into pieces, a process which is also called as habitat fragmentation, leaving habitat islands. You probably think of islands as a bits of land surrounded by water, but biological islands can be any patch of habitat surrounding by a different habitat. The smaller habitat island, the fewer species that can live there, and the smaller their populations. Both changes make habitats and species more vulnerable to other disturbances. This is the most important cause driving animals and plants to extinction. The most dramatic examples of habitat loss comes from tropical rainforests, once covering more than 14% of Earth's land surface. These rainforests now cover no more than 6%. 
the Amazon rainforest. It is so huge that it is called as the lungs of the planet, harboring probably millions of species, is being cut and cleared for cultivation of soya beans or for conversion of grasslands for raising beef cattle. Besides total loss, the degradation of many habitats by pollution also threatens the survival of many species. When large habitats are broken up to, into smaller fragments due to various human activities, mammals and birds requiring large territories and certain animals with migratory habits are badly affected, leading to population decline. The second reason for loss of biodiversity is over-exploitation by humans. Humans have always depended on nature for food and shelter. But when needs turn into greed, it leads to over-exploitation of natural resources. Many species extinction in the last 500 years, like that of stellar sea cow or the passenger pigeon, were due to over-exploitation by humans. Presently, many marine fish populations around the world are over-harvested, endangering the continued existence of some commercial important species. In the 1800s, hunting wiped out the Carolina parakeet and the passenger pigeon. Hunting still threatens rare animals in Africa, South America, and Southeast Asia. Some animals, like many birds, are hunted for meat. Others are hunted for their commercial valuable hides or skin, or because people believe their body parts have medicinal properties. Still others, like the parrots, in, are hunted to be sold as pets. Hunted species are affected even more than the species by habitat fragmentation, because fragmentation increases access for hunters and limits availability of hiding spaces for prey. The Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species bans international trades in products from a list of endangered species. Unfortunately, it is difficult to enforce laws in remote wilderness areas. Third most important reasons for loss of biodiversity is introduction of alien species. New species entering a geographical region are called exotic or alien species. Introduction of such invasive species may cause disappearance of native species through changed biotic interactions. When alien species are introduced unintentionally or deliberately for whatever purpose, some of them turn invasive and cause decline or extinction of indigenous species. Invasive species are considered second only to habitat destruction as a major cause of extinction of species. Exotic species are having large impact, especially in island ecosystems, which harbors much of the world's threatened biodiversity. For example, Nile perch, an exotic predatory fish introduced into Lake Victoria of South Africa, threatens the entire ecosystem of the lake by eliminating several native species of small cichlid fish species that were endemic to this freshwater ecosystem. Water hyacinth clogs rivers and lakes and threatens the survival of many aquatic species in lakes and river floodplains in several tropical countries, including India. Lantana camera has invaded many forest lands in different parts of India and strongly competes with native species. The recent illegal introduction of the African catfish, Clarius garipinus, for aquaculture purpose is posing a threat to the indigenous catfish in our rivers. Coextinction. When a species become extinct, the plant and animal species associated with it in an obligatory way also becomes extinct. When a host fish species become extinct, its unique assemblage of parasites also meet the same fate. Another example in the case of co-evolved plant pollinators, mutualism, where extinction of one invariably leads to the extinction of the other. Disturbance and pollution. Communities are affected by natural disturbances such as fire, tree fall, defoliation by insects. Man-made disturbances differ from natural disturbances in intensity. Rate and spatial extent, for example, man by using fire more frequently may change species richness of a community. Then some human impacts are new, never before faced by biota. Example, the vast number of synthetic compounds, massive release of radiation or spillover of oil in the seas. These impacts lead to change in the habitat quality. Pollution may reduce and eliminate population of sensitive species. For example, pesticide-linked decline of fish-eating birds and falcons 
Lead poisoning is another major cause of mortality of many species, such as of ducks, swans, and cranes, as they ingest the shotgun pellets that fall into lakes and marshes. Eutrophication, nutrient enrichment of water bodies, drastically reduces species diversity. Many of the pollutants are threatening biodiversity, like DDT, for example, prevents birds from laying healthy eggs. India's three vulture species saw an unprecedented decline to 97 to 99.9% .9 between 1992 and 2007, owing to the ingestion of diclofenac through cattle carcasses. Acid rain places stress on land and water organisms. Increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is dissolving in the ocean, making them more acidic, which threatens biodiversity of the coral reefs and many marine ecosystems. So to summarize, it is believed that the communities with high diversity tends to be less variable, more productive and more resistant to biological invasions. Earth's fossil history reveals incidences of mass extinctions in the past, but the present rates of extinction are largely attributed to human activities and are 100 to 1000 times more higher. Nearly 700 species have become extinct in recent times and more than 15,500 species of which 650 are from India currently face the threat of extinction. The causes of high extinction rates at present includes habitat loss and fragmentation, overexploitation, biological invasion and co-extinctions. So dear learners, I hope you were able to understand the concepts from this module and in the next module we'll try to find out answers to the question of how and why we can conserve biodiversity. Until then, thank you and goodbye. Thank you.